Hey everyone, and welcome back. This is our second video in our series on building a character in Foundry VTT's Pathfinder 2E system. If you haven't seen the first video, um, it went through the basics of creating a character, and really it outfits a character with almost everything you need uh, for most classes. An ancestry, a class, a background, equipment, all that good stuff. This video is specifically going to deal with two subjects, spellcasting and crafting. And I wanna show you how to represent those in your character sheet. So let's go ahead and open up that sheet. This is a third level wizard. It is essentially just a little bit more of a fleshed out version of the character that we created in the first video. But she is missing one very important thing and that is her spellcasting entry. So let's go ahead and rectify that right now. So the first thing we wanna do is click on this button here, add spellcasting entry, and the drop down menu here will be the specifics of the spellcasting entry you wanna create. So there are many types of spellcasting. Um, we as a wizard use prepared spellcasting. So let's set it to that. And our spell ability, of course, is intelligence. So a quick note about this box that popped up here. The flexible refers to the flexible caster class archetype that you could take, which changes the way that you can cast your spells. It sort of makes you a hybrid, prepared, spontaneous caster. We're gonna leave that unticked for right now because we are creating a vanilla wizard. So we'll click create and it comes up with this. So this basically is just an organization of your spells by level. The number here indicates how many slots of that particular level you have. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill these numbers up for a level three wizard. I'm just gonna be using the values from the table in the wizard class. Great, and after filling those out, this is what it looks like. But you might be able to notice that there isn't a helpful magnifying glass here to drag in our spells as we're so used to using with the compendium browser. And that is because our spells known are actually contained in this spell preparation window. So this window here is going to be storing all of the spells that we know. And from the list that we generate here, we can choose what spells to prepare each day. And to add spells to our spell book, which is kind of what I'm gonna call this, we use the Compendium Browser, our old friend. Now, as you can see, um, there are a lot of ways you can filter spells and that can be a very powerful tool. So for instance, if I wanted to see just cantrips, arcane cantrips, I would just take cantrip and arcane and I met with um, a generated list there. Maybe I wanna narrow it down further. Maybe I'm looking for cantrips with the attack trait I can select that in the Compendium Browser, and there you go. So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff to sort by. So with a little bit of practice, you can narrow down your criteria to find pretty much any spell you want. At the moment, I'm just gonna pick a couple of random spells. It's not really important because I just wanna show you how to fill up your slots for the day. All right, there we go. We have some spells in our spell book now. And to prepare them, all we need to do is drag it from this window onto our empty spell slots. And as you know, um, for cantrips, this doesn't really matter because you can cast a cantrip as often as you want. So these five slots are mostly keeping tabs on the different cantrips that you're able to cast on that day. But from first level and beyond, each slot actually is one distinct spell. So if I wanna prepare Burning Hands twice, I would need to prepare it in two separate spell slots. We now have a complete spell entry for the day. So I just wanna show you um, some of the interactions you can do on the spell entry, such as for, for instance, if I decide to click cast on Burning Hands, you can see that this chat card pops up and also a strike through is made through the spell slot that we expended. And this is useful because it lets you keep track of what you have and have not cast, and very easy to rectify. If this is a mistake, you just click this little plus icon and it brings it right back. Another brief note, uh, how to do heightening on these spell lists. So 
For instance, if I wanted to heighten Burning Hand to be a level two spell, I open up my spell book and all I need to do is drag the level one spell into the level two slot and it will actually consider it a level two spell for the purposes of heightening. So when I popped out this chart card, it was a first level spell. And so we can see the damage is seven. Now, if I cast this level two spell and I do damage, as you can see, it does automatically heighten. And the good news is this happens for your cantrips automatically as well. As you can see, being a level three wizard for phase bolt, for instance, I would expect to do 2d4 damage if it's heightening correctly. And indeed, that is exactly what I see. So heightening is very easy in the Pathfinder 2e system on Foundry. Uh, most of it is taken care of. All right, now let's look at a different style of spell entry. So I'm going to go ahead and delete our prepared spells and bring up a similar uh, spontaneous spell list. So imagine I'm maybe an Imperial Sorcerer in this. So as you can see here, we do not have a spell preparation uh, dialogue. Instead, we're just going to drag and drop our spells right onto the sheet because um, there's no distinction between what a spontaneous caster knows and what they can cast. Any spell that they know, they can cast. So just throw a couple over here. All right. Um, you can also see that instead of one number, we have two here. This just denotes the number of slots you have available versus the maximum number of slots you have each day. So for a level three sorcerer, I believe it would be four and three. And I will go ahead and do that now. And when I go through the same process, for instance, if I want to cast Burning Hands, it doesn't zero it out because I can cast it again. What it did do is reduce the number of spell slots I have available for the rest of the day. Another key feature of spontaneous spells is the ability to heighten. And that is taken care of with this little star icon that you can see. So for instance, if I wanted to make Burning Hands my signature spell, then I would click that button uh, and it appears even in the second level slot. And let's just check to make sure if it's a second level slot. Yep, it's heightening just fine. All right, the final type of uh, spell casting entry that I want to show today are focus spells. So when I create a focus spell entry, this is what it looks like. Let's add a spell, a focus spell. Adapt self, yeah, let's say we're a transmuter wizard you can see that there's a focus pool here, a radio button that you can click to fill and un uh, right click to unfill, left click to fill. Um, when I cast the spell, you can see that it automatically takes the point away. And if I try to cast a spell while having no point in my focus pool, I will get an error message alerting me to the fact that I don't have enough focus points. So, Whenever you create a focus spell entry, you will have a focus pool of one by default. And as you can see, there isn't like a number, an input that you can easily change this for because it's actually regulated by the feats and features that you have. So at the moment, it's just gonna be one. But say I had something that increased the size of my focus pool. So I'm gonna cheat here a bit. Um, not a bit, a lot. I'm going to give myself a level eight feet. Um, let's see. I will go right up to eight because I know the spell, the, the feet I want is an advanced school spell, as you know. So this gives me another spell and it also increases the number of focus points in my pool by one. And there we go. Now you can see that my focus pool is two. So it's... Uh, not as easily changeable. The, folk, the size of your focus pool only changes based on what features you have. All right, that's all I want to say about spells. Let's move on to the second major topic of this video, which is crafting. So this is mostly something that is going to appeal to uh, classes like the alchemist archetypes, like the talisman dabbler or the snare crafter, basically, um, those classes that 
have an ability to generate items on a day-to-day -day basis. It's kind of useful for everyone because it also handles the long-form crafting rules, but I would say that it is most vital for um, the ones with daily crafting needs. So I'll actually start off with the long-form crafting and then we'll move to the more specific class dependent one a little bit later. So let's see, let's get some formulas in here using our good old compendium browser. Great, there we go. The elixir of life minor. So what this is telling us over here with DC and cost and all of that is the cost of crafting it using long form crafting, the one that takes four days and um, needing to pay half up front, etc. So if I wanted to craft this, all I would need to do is click this little hammer icon. There we go. So it tells me everything, basically. It knew the DC already, it rolls for me, so I succeed. And it has already counted the discount per day, uh, how many days it will take until I don't need to pay anything. And I can choose what option I want to take. Do I want to pay the full cost and get those items right now? Do I want to take those 12 days and only pay for the raw material? So let's say I need it stat. So I'm going to click um, pay the full cost. Oh, it is telling me that I don't have enough coins. It's a good thing the system checks for that. Well, I'm going to go ahead and cheat and give myself um, enough coins to do this. Let's try this again. There we go. And if we look at the inventory, bam, we have four elixirs of life automatically added to my inventory. So that's kind of how you would do long form craft. You can obviously adjust the quantity, which will adjust the cost and all of that stuff. But let's now look at daily crafting. So I'm going to give myself the talisman dabbler archetype feat. Now, as soon as I do that, the system automation recognizes what a talisman dabbler can do. So suddenly you see in the crafting page, there is this section devoted to it. And so let's add a couple formulas for talismans that I would know. I can drag those here. And then I would say complete daily crafting. And what now happens is if I go to my inventory, you see there is an owlbear claw and a wolf fang. And you notice that they have this different color to them and this eye icon, which is explanatory here, it will automatically expire. So you don't need to worry about tracking what items you've created through these features that only last for a day, because as soon as a day passes, usually, for example, when you hit the rest for the night icon, as I'll do now to show you, those things will disappear. Temporary items removed. Okay, now I've done a bit of a radical change. I've changed Samara's class to be an alchemist because I also want to show you what the crafting tab looks like now. There we go. You can see that it's a little bit more elaborate than for the talisman dabbler. We actually can track the exact number of infused reagents you have at any point in time. And if I'm dragging, uh, for example, over here, it's going to tell me how much my reagent cost is. So if I'm making six elixirs of life through advanced alchemy, it's going to cost three reagents. I also want to highlight that maybe after we've done this, if we want to do quick alchemy on the fly, all we have to do is tick that box and then click this craft icon. And you can see that I get the chat message that was um, from a little bit earlier. I was testing to see that indeed it looks like two reagents, because I've done it twice now, were taken out and they are present right here as an infused item. So it works for both advanced alchemy and quick alchemy. And that is pretty much what I wanted to cover regarding spell casting and crafting when creating a character in this system. And with that, our character is pretty much complete. And n our next video is going to delve into the actual playing aspect, navigating the system in real time and how to make that experience as smooth as possible. So stay tuned for that.